Good morning and welcome back to I'll Knit If I Want To. Uh, I just really got lost down the rabbit hole of reading all of y'all's questions. There's so many good ones, so it was kind of hard to pick. I'm already looking at the ones I want to answer next week. Um, so as always, I do have a link down below in the show notes where you can put in your questions and I will do my best to answer them. So let's jump in today. Um, I am wearing my Vintage 83 sweater. This is a cute little brioche yoke sweater with a textured bottom. It's a little crop top. And I'm wearing it with my corduroy overalls I just made yesterday. And it's actually a little cold in my studio right now. It has cooled off here. So I also have on my satellite shawl which is also brioche and one of my favorites. Um, yarns are Ritual Dyes, Farmer's Daughter Fibers, and La Bien Aimé. But I'll link all those patterns down below. And let's try and answer some questions. So question number one, I actually had two people ask a super similar question, so I'll read them both out. Uh, even though I'm an intermediate level knitter, I tend to knit mostly with wool and wool blends. What are the practicalities I should consider when combining two different yarns with different natural fibers in one garment, such as merino wool and alpaca wool? And the other question that was really similar was longtime sewist, somewhat new knitter. My question is about mixing fibers in a project. I'm working on my first big project, the Briochalicious Shawl. That one's a little tough to say, Briochalicious Shawl, and have a mystery yarn remnant most likely acrylic. The rest of the shawl is all Malabrigo sock superwash. In the interest of using my stash, I'd like to use the mystery remnant for the last brioche stripe since the swatch looks fine. But are there more long-term problems I could run into? Will different fibers block out differently, wear differently? I'm not too worried about size since it's a shawl, but want to be alert to any potential hazards down this path. It would break my heart to run this project I've spent so long on. So, Back to part one, um, it really depends with yarn what that blend is. If you're using a 100% wool with a 100% alpaca, they definitely act quite a bit differently. Alpaca, in my experience, doesn't have a lot of bounce back or memory. It's very drapey and it grows a lot and it's floppy. <laughs> This is kind of what I think of. I've used 100% alpaca. I've used it once for a hat and it just had no structure. Um, it can be really lovely for like a soft shawl and it's delightful as a blend. If it's blended with wool, that will help give it a little more stability and bounce back. So if you're using two blends, I would use those together. Um, but the best way to know would probably be to knit a swatch of each and block them out and just see how different they look. Like knit them on the same needles. Um, I would even do the same amount of stitches cast on and the same amount of rows and just see if one grows a lot more than the other and just kind of compare them. Um, in the second part of that question, shawls are my favorite time to mix up fibers because they're so forgiving. We wrap shawls around us and that means that it's okay if they respond a little differently and i am totally behind using up that stash especially in a shawl so go ahead and use that mystery yarn and i think you're going to be just fine this shawl for instance has two different bases in it one is a baby surrey alpaca which is um maybe i can get this closer actually my sweater does too so this is baby surrey alpaca and then so are the so you see the pink, light pink dark pink and gold and then these three colors so it's super fuzzy and then the let's see this one's a rambouillet wool i don't actually know if i'm pronouncing that correctly but I'm sure somebody will let me know. Um, and then this one has a wool, it's Gotland, and I think something else. Um, and they work beautifully together and no issues. Uh, but shawls, again, if you're kind of not sure, 
shawls are a great place to mix them together. I do lots of shawls mixing different fibers because um, again, they just wrap around your body. But if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of this, I highly recommend Clara Park's book, The Knitter's Book of Yarn, because she goes into great detail and it's such a good resource. Um, so that book and swatching, trying it out, seeing what you like, like that's how I figured out 100% alpaca, not my favorite hat yarn, but it's lovely and soft and great for other things. Um, and it's beautiful in a blend. So it's also can be really fun to mix fibers together to get the best of both of their attributes into one fabric. So that can be really fun too. One of my favorites would be We've talked a little bit about superwash and how that can lose a little bit of its stability. Sometimes hems can blow out, things like that when using superwash yarn. It doesn't quite have the bounce back of a non-superwash. So something I like to do is hold it together with a strand of mohair and that mohair, which is usually a silk mohair, it's so strong. And so I feel like that kind of helps give me some of my stability back. Um, so just playing around with things like that. All right, the next question. As a beginner knitter, I'm wondering how often you wash your knits. I'm working with 100% wool, but I'm curious if you can really get by with washing them only a few times each season, even though I plan to wear my sweaters more often. Thank you. Um, so wool is magical. It's self-cleaning. Um, the keratin in wool actually breaks down odors and bacteria and things like that. So you really can wear your woolens longer. Um, but it really depends on the item that you've made. So shawls, I only wash if they, if, you know, maybe if there's a spill on it. Um, if there was something to make it funky, that's when I would wash a shawl. Otherwise, typically I don't wash them a lot unless I've been wearing them in a way, maybe they've been rubbing up somewhere on my body where I feel like there could be some skin cells or sweat or anything like that. And I'm going to storm for a season and I'm worried about moths. That is when I would wash my shawls at the end of the season if I'm worried about that. But there's not a lot of seasons I don't wear my shawls. Like it's almost July and I'm wearing my shawl. So um, if I was gonna pack them away, I might wash before that. Sweaters, I, you know, kind of do a sniff test. Like, does it need it? Did I spill anything on it? Does it smell okay? Um, and even woolen socks. So I have a weird thing about socks. If I'm wearing normal socks and I take them off, even cause I just have to for a minute, I can't put them back on, it weirds me out. But I don't feel that way with wool socks. Like wool socks I'll wear a couple times. Um, so yeah, wool's amazing. And um, I'm trying to think of anything else about it that, yeah, no. Um, but yeah, I would depend it, I would depend it on if you're wearing something that's not 100% wool. Um, but otherwise, if it smells good and it looks good, let it ride. All right. Question number three, how do you feel about male knitters adapting your sweater patterns? Do you have any tips for making some of those adjustments? So I just had actually a great conversation about this with a gentleman who works at our fabric shop here. And I very strongly believe that garments don't have genders and anybody can wear anything they want. Um, and so that is one of the reasons I choose to purposely not put in a lot of shaping when it comes into my sweaters, such as in the body. Um, I only think I have one sweater that has waist shaping. For one, I'm kind of an up and down in my waist. I, I don't have a strong curve there. And so I have found for years I had trouble. I was stuck in the, I would knit a sweater I liked and then I never felt like it looked good on me. So my mom would get them and she has a great hand wardrobe because of it. And I couldn't figure out like, why doesn't this turn out the way I wanted? And finally I realized, oh, waist shaping doesn't work for me. It ends up adding bulk in areas that just really doesn't suit me. So I don't do that. And um, I wanted to mention that because again, I've had a few questions on just 
that struggle to find out how to get that sweater to fit really well. And I really find that it's unlocking those few key things. That was a big learning moment for me. Um, but that being said, my sweaters tend to be a little easier to adapt because you're not, you don't have to worry about any kind of waist shaping. You can definitely add in waist shaping if you need that. And really the main thing I would adjust for uh, male physique is they tend to have broader shoulders and might need a deeper yoke depth. Um, and so I would base typically, sorry, I'm trying to think, I have a few patterns that I have graded for both men and women. And really that's the difference is the raglan or whatever yoke depth because really not a whole lot else changes with that stitch count because you're still gonna choose the size that's best for your circumference. Um, so really it's extending that. I'm not an expert there, uh, but it's worked well for the sweaters of mine that I've then knit my husband one. And I have seen quite a few male knitters knit my sweater patterns. Um, so you might be able to find those in Ravelry projects or on Instagram under the Drea Renee Knits hashtag. I've seen So Faded's Knit for Men. I've seen Shifty, Wool and Honey. Um, oh man, I'm going to see if I can find, there's a couple that I'm going to see if I can find them and link them. So absolutely, 100% you can adapt those patterns and if you need to those are kind of the areas i would pay attention to is really just making sure that the shoulders and the raglan or i keep saying raglan the yoke depth feel good for you all right especially top down you can try in as you go so that might be a good place to start and you might not want to decrease the arms quite as much but maybe you do it depends on how you like your sleeve fit okay let's keep going question number four I love your weekender sweater, but have only knit top down sweaters, never bottom up. I'm a little intimidated after hearing a few people say they tried bottom up once and vowed never again. Can you give any tips on taking the plunge on bottom up construction? So I would love to know why they said never again. I'm curious. I, I love a top down sweater. Absolutely. A lot of my sweaters are top down, um, but I don't mind bottom up. The The pro to top down is being able to try it on in a very different way than you can try on um, bottom up. But the Weekender is my best selling pattern. I think it has a nice fit. Um, so I think that's a pretty good one to start with. I would say if you're at all nervous about it, have you you done top down sweaters? So I would just make sure you're picking sweaters that have like maybe compare schematics because if you liked the fit of your top down sweater knitting it bottom up isn't going to change anything um if you know that you like those finished measurements then you're probably going to be great um and again i just highly recommend when you find certain lengths sizes measurements is the word i'm really looking for that work well for you jot those down in your notebook because then you know okay, I'm knitting this from the bottom up, so I can't really try it on as I go, but I know that I like a sweater that's 12 inches in my before the underarm. And I like a yoke depth that's eight inches. And what, you know, when you know those things, then that's pretty easy to be able to trust the pattern and just maybe you need to shave off an inch or add an inch before you separate the yoke for the sleeves if it's a um, drop shoulder or whatever it may be. So I think if you have some of those key measurements and you know you like those, then you can confidently knit bottom up. Um, and really the reasons, at least for me as a designer, I choose whether to go bottom up or top down. A lot of times it's based on the shaping and what will look the best because increases and decreases aren't necessarily perfect mirrors of each other and sometimes one or the other is more intuitive for knitters as they're knitting that pattern so that's how i'll make that decision is what's going to make this the most like streamlined way to create this pattern for people as they're working it and yeah, that's, that kind of is what determines it for me and how I decide that. Um, so yeah. All right, last question. When you plan on knitting socks, do you always use sock yarn? 
Also, if I am fairly new with sock knitting, how will I know what needle size to use? On previous sock patterns, I made gauge, but I have very narrow ankles and feet and the socks were too loose. How can I get a good fit? So I thought this was a good question because I've had my own little <laughs> journey with socks. Um, I have used yarn that is not sock yard and I walked through the heel of that sock in about a week. So I kind of learned my lesson there. I really think you want to make sure you're using yarn that is strong and has a really great ply you definitely don't want to use like a single ply yarn because it's just going to fall apart or we really put a lot of friction on socks so i do like you know i'll use a little nylon in my sock yarns um if not nylon it's been really interesting since i started spinning my own yarn because there's all different kinds of ways to ply and there's different structures of yarn to really try and get the most strength out of there. There's also, if you don't wanna use nylon, if you want a more environmentally friendly choice, um, adding in silk or silk mohair is a great way to really strengthen it up. Um, and you can obviously use you know, typically we only see sock yarn as like a fingering weight yarn. You can definitely do socks in like a DK, um, but they're gonna be thicker. They might be really nice to wear with boots, uh, but otherwise a fingering weight like a sock yarn is kind of the most comfortable to wear within shoes. But I definitely will knit slippers using different weights of yarn and also not always then, I'm not as scared about walking through them as I am with socks but I do still like a stronger yarn because yeah, they just get a lot of friction. Um, and as far as fit, so a good rule of thumb I have found, I'm very open to anybody who has other thoughts on this, um, but about one inch or two and a half centimeters of negative ease in that circumference tends to be good to hug up on your foot. So let's say you have an eight inch circumference of your foot. And when I say that, I'm talking about measuring around like the ball of your foot. Um, then you would want to pick the size that's seven inches. Um, I don't know what that is in centimeters, <laughs> but you can do the math, I'm sure. Seven times 2.54 and you'll know. Um, so anyways, about one inch, two and a half centimeters negative ease should get you a pretty good fit. Um, I didn't mean to say around the ball of your foot. I think I'm a little tired, guys. Um, I don't really want to show my feet, but <laughs> you can look. You can even Google how to measure my feet for socks and you'll see what, how, what I'm talking about. Whoop. All right, so, but back on that good fit, another thing that I recommend doing is doing a ribbed sock because that is gonna naturally pull in and it's gonna hug your feet where it needs to. Some of us have curvier feet. Some of us can be really wide at the ball of our foot and then some people have a really high arch. I mean, there's all different things and I'm no sock expert. There are people that have really dug in and taken it all apart and looked at all the different nuances of instep and heels and um really perfecting that fit there are a couple sock books i have one i have right here is custom socks knit to fit your feet um and i have another one that i actually can't remember the name of i have it on like my ipad from years ago um but i definitely think that having playing around with different patterns, trying to keep to that bit of negative ease using um, stitch patterns that give you some elasticity. So beyond ribbing, even cables also uh, will help with that kind of pull in and then also giving some stretch. So I have like my Vinner socks. Um, I often like to use cables in place of ribbing because I will do it in little panels so that it still acts like a ribbing. But my DRK everyday socks are my go-to sock pattern. And I think that's a really great one to get a successful sock um, because of the ribbing. My testers, I had a load of testers because I think that pattern comes with 11 sizes of socks. I did a lot of sizes 
and I had at least two testers per size and every single one of them said the fit was perfect. So I do think that ribbing just really helps and makes for a great fit. Um, and I did have a, what time is it? Oh yeah, we're okay. Um, so I did have a little bonus question here. I am loving to get to know your backstory. You mentioned a few weeks ago that you lived in New Zealand. That's where I am. Can you tell us more about that? Hi, New Zealand. Um, so I moved there when I was about like 21. I think I turned 22 while I lived there. I lived there for a year. I started in Auckland and lived there for a few months. And then we moved down to Lake Okerica, right outside of Rotorua. And it was beautiful. I mean, it really, it was amazing. I love New Zealand. I have quite the special place in my heart for that country. Um, yeah, I did a lot of hiking. I really got, that's when I was like blogging. I had my blog, I'll knit if I want to. Same, the namesake of this little weekly episode. Um, yeah, I went to a sheep show, which was great. I, that's where I started to learn about sheep breeds and saw a guy shear a sheep in like a minute and a half. Um, and it's also when I got my first spinning wheel, I got as a surprise present while I was there. I wish I still had it. It didn't move back with me, but it was a spinning wheel that a man made for his wife out of driftwood he found on the beach. And everyone who'd ever owned it had signed the bottom of the Lazy Kate. So it was really special. Um, and it was really cool because the woman, that we got the spinning wheel from sure son is a merino sheep farmer on the south island and so she let me come over to her house and started teaching me how to spin and she just had like a bag of raw fiber i don't think it had been washed scoured anything like it was very lanolin rich and yeah, she just taught me how to spin with that. And then she had notebooks full of her own like natural dyeing experiments. So she's the one who told me like, you could dye with onion skins. And um, that kind of got me into my first attempts of doing some yarn dyeing with stuff around the kitchen. Um, so yeah, it was very, very special time. But yeah, I guess that's it. Well, I hope that y'all have a great weekend. Thank you for sending in your questions. Uh, we've got the DRK Adorn Yourself Knit Along going on over in my Ravelry group. You can also jump on to Instagram. Let me see if I have the hashtag right here. I think the hashtag is just DRK Adorn Yourself Knit Along, K-A-L. Um, so yeah, if you haven't joined us, please do. You can knit socks, cowls, hats, mittens, mitts, slippers, all welcome. Uh, but yeah, I hope you're enjoying, if you're, if you're in my part of the world, I hope you're enjoying some warm weather. And if you're not, I hope you're enjoying a cozy knitting season. And I'll see you next week. Bye.